Hello everyone, welcome back. In the previous video, we talked about how to probe for PCI devices using the CF8 CFC mechanism. And today, let's look at how to use the MM config mechanism to access the config space registers. We talked about this in detail in session 7, but today I'm going to take an example and walk through it. Okay, just to recap, we know the format of the mmconfig D word that we have to build will have a yeah, mmconfig base. I'm calling it M here. And then we're going to have the bus number, then the device function number, right? Five bits for device and three bits for function. And then we're going to have 12 bits for registers because we have 4KB of config space registers in PCI Express. Okay, so this is the format we need to build, right? We would know the bus device function and register you want to read, but the only unknown here would be the MM config base. Now, how do we find the MM config base? If you are a BIOS developer, you would know because BIOS is the one that programs MM config base and exposes it to the operating system. So as a BIOS developer, you would know internally what that value is, right? But if you want to find this value from an OS domain, then let's see what happens under the hood, okay? So, mmconfig base is exposed by a SCPI table called MCFG table. So this MCFG table is an SCPI table, but the definition of that table is captured in the PCI firmware spec. You can download this spec from the PCI SIG website. So you have the standard SCPI header in here and the signature MCFG represents that this is an MCFG table. And this configuration space structure is defined down here. And this is what we are interested in, the base address. Ignore the multiple PCI segment at this point. We'll talk about segments in detail when we go into much more uh, deeper into PCI Express. So all we are interested at this point is the base address. Okay. Right. But how do you find this MCFG table? Let me just quickly explain how to find the table. Okay, So there is a signature called RSD PTR in ASCII. Okay. Once you have, once you find the RSD pointer signature, uh, below that you're going to have a pointer to RSDT, root system descriptor table. Okay. So this points to a root system descriptor table. We'll, we'll walk through this soon. RSDT, okay? Now this is again a table of pointers, okay? And each pointing to a different ACPI table, okay? So let's say this points to uh, an HPET table, high performance event timer ACPI table. Let's say this points to SRAT table, system resource affinity table. This points to MCFG table, right? So each one will basically point to different set of ACPI tables. So our goal is to go find our, the MCFG table, okay? Now, the way you find this RSD pointer, the signature we talked about here, is dependent on whether you are booting on legacy mode or EFI mode, okay? If you're booting on legacy mode, then you need to search for this RSD PTR string in either the E segment or the F segment or in the EBDA, extended BIOS data area. We talked about EBDA in session one, right? If you want to go to an EFI boot, then the EFI system table, which is passed as a parameter to the OS loader, this will have the information as to where the RSDP is. So here is the ACPI spec that talks about what I just mentioned, right? In case you are a legacy boot, then you can find it in the EBDA or you can find it in the E1000 or F1000 segments. Or if you are an EFI boot, then you are looking at the EFI system table, right? So here, so this is the UEFI spec and I'm showing you the UEFI system table. The pointer to this table is passed to the operating system. And part of the system table is the configuration table, 
right? And if you look at the configuration table, is nothing but a, a, a bunch of grid pointer pairs, right? And if you want to find the ACPI RSD pointer, you look for the corresponding grid here, which is this one. So once you find this grid in the configuration table, that will have the pointer to the RSDP, and th that's how you find the RSD pointer. Okay. So this is a read-write utility that I find very useful. Now here, since I don't know what pointer got passed to the operating system for the EFI system table, I did a brute force search and found the RSDPTR signature. You can see it right here. So once you find the RSDPTR, and there are a bunch of things in here, this BBFF E038, that's going to be your RSDT, right? So I'm going to open that one. And here we have the RSDT table. Okay, remember what we talked about in here? So RSDPTR points to the RSDT table and RSDT has a bunch of pointers to actual tables. Okay. So now going back here, we found the RSDT and it's got a bunch of table pointers. So let's open one more window here and look for the first pointer, which is going to be BBFF D000. Okay, I got an FACP table. Okay, then I'm going to look for the next one, which is going to be B000, right? And that's the HPET table, the high performance event timer table. And then let's look at A0. This is the MADT table, describes the epics in the system. And then we have 90. Hopefully, this is our MCFG table. There you go. This is the MCFG table, and here's E0. 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. So this is going to be our MCFG base. You can take a look at the format of the table I showed earlier and then map this data to it and you will find that this is going to be your base address. Okay. But this tool gives easier way to do this. Actually, I could have gone to an ACPI tab here and it's going to go through, find all the tables and it's also going to interpret those tables and show it to me. So here it's found the RSDP and then RSDT. This is where we found it too. And then, yeah, there are a bunch of pointers and then MCFG is right here. And they even decode it for you. Okay, so E1000 is going to be your, here, this one is going to be your base address. So now we found the base address. Now let's go and look at what we have in bus zero, device function zero, register zero, right? Okay, so we have 8086, which is the vendor ID and some device ID in here. And if you look at zero E, it shows it's an endpoint device, okay? So we can go through and cycle through. We can increment the bus device and the function numbers here and cycle through in a loop and find out what the topology looks like. But again, this nifty tool has already done that for us. So let's go and look at PCI. So there you go. So this is bus zero device zero function zero that we read here, right? So it has the same thing. And it's even decoding it for us saying Intel host bridge. So in the next video, let's go and talk about bar registers and how the endpoint device requests certain address space for its own use. Okay. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.